Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. Let's take a look at adjacency matrices with permutations. Okay, so here's a permutation <clears throat> written in cycle notation. We can represent this cycle by assignment arrows in a digraph, which has an adjacency matrix. And we can think of for this adjacency matrix, it works best to think of it as rows because out of, so one goes to two, so one goes to two, um, looks like, and then two goes to three, and three goes to one. And similarly, for this permutation, <clears throat> since it's best to think about rows, remember that we input things on the left side, so composition actually looks in reverse, and we think of, think of, think of things this way, and so, this matrix, um, let's call uh, the adjacency matrix for one, two, three, and this adjacency matrix call A12. So if we want to compose, first do this and then this, we would we would put the first thing on the left and multiply like this. And this should be the same as the adjacency matrix for one, two, three, composed with one, two, where this composition means do this, then that. This also means do this, then that. But since inputs on the left, and we're going from left to right with composition or input from one thing to another when we're considering rows with matrix multiplication, we've, we have changed the order here. So hence, that's a little perk for why you use columns when you're thinking about a matrix multiplication as functions because it preserves the order. The order of multiplication is the order of composition. However, it's in reverse when we use rows. So let's just try this out to verify. <clears throat> let's multiply these two matrices together in that order. So first, this one multiplied to that one, okay? So writing this out, we have 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, multiplied to 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. Um, and if you want, let's just practice doing rows. So <clears throat> here we think, OK, so we're going to do it row by row. So this means just the first row, the, the, out, the output of this is going to be to take the middle row of this. And let's see, where does this row, where does this go? The image of this is to take the first row of that. And then this means to take the um, the last row here, so one, zero, zero. Okay, now let's interpret what this means, okay? One goes to three, and uh, three goes back to one, and two stays to itself. So this should look like one, three, and you can check it out right here. Let's see, one goes to two, which goes to three. So one goes to three, and three, come in, goes back to one, and two is fixed. You can check two, one, one, two. So yes, so we get one, three. It's instructive to notice that one, two, composed with one, two, three, is not one, three. Let's just check to see what it is. Well, if we input one, we get two, one, one is fixed. If we input two, two goes to three, and you can see it'll have to go back because the other one's already spoken for. Or you could just try it out. Three goes to one, which goes to two. So a little illustration of using adjacency matrices with cycle notations and permutations and how the order of matrix multiplication is reversed. Thanks for watching.